It was an interesting time for me in 2019 when I thought I was going to stay loyal and faithful. I did multiple research research in the past to better myself. It was when I landed upon Freely the Banana Girls video on the weight loss lifestyle guru, Amber Lynn Reed. Hey guys, so welcome to a new vlog. Something I ain't fit in. I am like really grateful because I was worried I was gonna be alone and like depressed and sad, but it was actually a really good Weekend. Yeah, when I walk like normal, I, I do waddling. This is supposedly a pajama. A pajama? Pajama. What is the worst decision you have made while incredibly horny? Oh, okay. Um. And I know a few other people who have actually used it. It's, um, I've been using it all over, honey. I am, I am frustrated. frustrated. I'm I hurt. I'm so damn, damn i'm closer to the 400s than i am the 600s now is just it makes me feel really good like i said i know i could have done better and i hope i didn't let anyone down hey guys welcome to day five of my 100 days of trying i break down i'm mentally um unstable a lot of time <laughs> <laughs> she blocked me on her cell phone and the reasoning is because I'm fat okay like everyone should love everyone it's so crazy <laughs> yes and ever since I landed upon that I've been stuck in the side of YouTube called gore world or to be specific the amberverse amberlyn reed born on December 27th 1990 is the greatest internet celebrity to ever touch YouTube. Thanks to her work ethic and dedication to YouTube, she was able to receive a whopping of 200,000 subscribers in today's count. Because of her loyal fans, the Ann Babies, and her haters, the Hater Nation, she's able to live a lavish lifestyle, being able to buy whatever she wants. From a quiet, charismatic girl to being one of the most problematic YouTuber ever, what went wrong? Today, we'll be diving into Amberlynn's earliest videos to break down some of the most controversial and drama-filled moments in chronological order. We will also touch on Amberlynn's traumatic past just to understand her before jumping the gun. Sit back and relax. Let's go all the way back to the beginning of Amberlynn's YouTube career. On November 17th, 2013, 22-year-old Amberlynn Reed uploaded her first YouTube video called Nervous Awkward Weight Loss Vlog. In the video, she started off by introducing herself, stating how she felt motivated by the weight loss community. From the start, we learned that the main focus of Amber's content is weight loss related videos. My name is Amber Lynn and I wanted to start um, a YouTube channel for weight loss. I see a lot of videos of other people doing it and it's so motivating and it's just something I'm really, really interested in doing. During this time in her life, she was living with her then girlfriend Crystal and her parents. Crystal being the first character to be introduced in the Amberverse. Like Yin and Yang, they were a match made in heaven because Crystal was the person that saved Amber from her darkest time. Within the first week being on YouTube, Amber decided to open up on camera about her traumatic past in their two-part video. Amber revealed her rough childhood surrounded by drug addict parents who were constantly arguing and violent towards each other in front of her and her brother. Despite all that, Amber Lind was an adventurous kid and was often called a golden child for being tanned and outdoorsy. When Amber was eight, her mom gave birth to her third child, with Amber and her two brothers left to fend for themselves. They tried to hold on to each other as long as possible. One day when I was at um, school, I think third or fourth grade, I got a call to the office. Um, there were police there and I wasn't sure what was really happening and come to find out, I was being put in foster care. Amber took on the role of a mother when her parents failed to raise them and was forced to grow up faster than the average kid. Amber and her older brother were eventually put in a foster care home while their baby brother was put in close adoption. She and her brother moved into multiple foster homes and were mentally and physically abused. She also claimed that she was thrown down the stairs when she was 10. Eventually, Amber would be separated from her brother for two years with no one left. To cope during this time, she turned to food at just 11 years old Amber was around 131 kilograms, triple the size of an average 11-year-old girl concerning the foster parents. With that, they would restrict Amber, putting her on a diet at a young age. She was forced to down a gallon of milk before eating her meal, just so that she wouldn't overeat. When Amber was 12, her parents decided to clean up their act and went to court, getting a second chance to raise Amber and her brother, but only for a six-month period as part of their trial. 
Amber at first believed in her parents and thought they've changed for good. Unfortunately, it was a long yet short-lived trial. The six months actually turned into two long, lonely years as her parents relapsed, going back to old habits and eventually separated, ending their relationship. Around this time, Amber's brother grew frustrated and lashed out his anger onto her, physically abusing her. But it was a failed trial. The whole time my family was just getting worse and worse. I started smoking marijuana. Um, I turned to the wrong type of people to hang out with. My brother started acting out. Um, he started hating me. My parents got worse. Fast forward to one day in high school. Amber texted a friend and told them she was suicidal. The friend's mom found the text message and got the school involved, which resulted in Amber involuntarily admitted to a mental hospital for six days. Within those six days, she was able to reflect on her life and found a purpose to live. She admitted she never wanted to off herself in the first place, but was just severely depressed. Getting back to the outside world, Amber was never really the type to do well in school as she fell into the wrong crowd and would eventually turn into drugs such as marijuana and alcohol. It affected her performance as a student as she would frequently skip class. On top of that, she was bullied by peers and friends for being smelly and for being, quote, fat Amber. Amber and her brother were then put back in foster care again when the cops came to their school and escorted them. She spent months in her new foster care, longer than usual, but was able to spend time with her mom who was permitted to visit once a week. On a random day, Amber jokingly texted one of her friends how she wanted to live with them. To her response, Amber's joke came true and she was able to move in with her friend. At first, it was like a sleepover, but Amber became more depressed and would do nothing but eat, watch TV, and sleep. Amber felt lonely despite being around her friend and sadly, the relationship drifted as she felt torturous by her friend and turned to food once again. It became so bad that Amber ate herself up to 190 kilograms at just 16 years old. Fast forward, senior year, Amber moved to Oklahoma to live with her grandma and experienced her first anxiety attack and was later diagnosed with panic disorder. During the last year of high school, she was able to uphold a positive reputation and was voted the nicest student amongst her peers and had decently good grades. Amber also had to work extra hard to complete her senior year since she had no credits from her previous year for skipping classes. She was able to get enough credits to get her diploma, being the first person in her family to graduate high school. This was around the same time in 2008 where Amber was in a long-distance relationship with Casey, who was 16 years old at the time. Being a long-distance relationship, Amberlynn wanted to meet Casey and traveled to Arizona to spend time together. Out of nowhere, news broke to Amber that her grandma did not want her living under her roof anymore. Not knowing what to do, she decided to stay with Casey in Arizona. Even though Casey's mom and boyfriend hated Amber for some unknown reason, Amber kept herself busy by attending college for a bit, studying criminal justice, and experienced a college life. It wasn't all rainbows and sunshine, though. Like Amber's previous living situation, she was allegedly abused verbally and physically by Casey and his mom, in many ways causing her relationship to drift. Isolated and in a dark place, Amber found herself another online friend, Crystal and connected with her instantly. After weeks of talking, perhaps months, feeling validated and understood, Amber confessed her love for Crystal. Like any person in love would do, Crystal, who felt the same way, traveled to see Amber in Arizona where she was living with Casey, who rightfully disapproves of the situation. In 2011, after a three-year relationship, Casey, who was 18, and Amberlynn, 21, got into a huge argument resulting in Amberlynn running away to Virginia to be with her knight in shiny armor, Crystal. Towards the end of 2013, Amberlynn would partake in her very first Vlogmas, a tradition for lifestyle creators where they would upload every day in December until Christmas. Transitioning to 2014, New Year, New Amber, she had a goal to lose X amount of weight this year, but in order to do that, she must first overcome the fear of having extra loose skin. The first plan to get her into the right direction, Amberlynn would document her weight daily through her first ever weigh-in video as well as go on a strict diet. She would also partake in the 100 days of exercise challenge, where the person would exercise for 100 days given the name Enthusiastic. Amberlynn expressed her hatred for exercising as it's seen as a chore for her, but is driven to do so, so she put her own spin to it, introducing the 
100 days of movement, where she set a goal to be on the elliptical for 20 minutes for 100 days straight. The first day of the challenge on January 14th, 2014 was filled with excitement and motivation, just like most of us on our New Year's resolution. But as expected on a journey, there comes ups and downs as she struggles to be consistent, being one of the first times we see her fail a goal of hers, unable to promise her daily weigh-ins. I think you might need to read this book, monks. You look a little chunk chunk. <laughs> Day three is called Do It Anyway. I don't, I don't feel like exercising, exercising today. today. Does, Does this sound familiar? familiar? Then, then what happens? happens? Do, you do you push, push yourself and exercise in spite of not feeling like, like it? it? Or do you give in and hang out on the couch because you don't feel like making the effort? Right now, you may be solidly committed to your goals, but what happens when you don't feel like cooking healthy meals or following your diet plan? If you aren't careful, you can easily slide back from being committed to being just interested. This would only be the beginning of Amberlynn's infamous cycle, as she would go through an endless battle between herself and her inner demons. Going back to Amber's failed goal on a daily weigh-in videos, she would go back for a second time to attempt the daily weigh-ins. This time, she would also follow a book guide, 100 Days of Weight Loss, working on the mental side of it and to achieve weight loss. Unfortunately, she would set herself for failure by saying she can't weigh in daily due to being busy on the weekends. And more than anything, I wish I can change those things about myself, but I can't. And those things that I cannot change about myself cause me to overeat and to just fail at my weight loss, completely fail. Um, about three months later, after having ups and downs, Amberlynn started another weigh-in challenge called 27 Days of Weigh-In. Her goal this time is to lose weight lower than her attended weight goal before summer. To achieve her goal this time, Amberlynn convinced Crystal to partake in the daily weigh-ins to motivate her. Um, as you guys know, I'm going to a vacay. So I'm kind of introducing a little segment, I guess we can call it, to my uh, channel. So, there are 27 weigh-ins. Obviously, I'm not going to weigh in on the 7th when we leave because we're actually waking up at probably like 2 a.m. And I'm not going to weigh myself that early. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new goal. Yes, I know, me and my new goals, I need to just die because I can't stop making new goals. Fast forward, we land ourselves to 2015, a year later since starting her channel. This time, Amber had a master plan, and you guessed it, weight loss related plans. Disclaimer, the reason why I'm focused on her weight loss journey right now is not because I'm poking fun of her and her struggles, it's because I simply want to point out her repetitive nature and pattern, which will come to play later on. Trust me though, there are more to Amberlynn than being repetitive. Struggling to stay consistent, Amber would fall off again, but behind the scenes, she would eventually confess to her audience in a video. With this emotional breaking point, Amber became the state of vulnerability, fearing that one day she might be 600 pounds and bed bound if she doesn't change. Some might say it's not as serious as anorexia or bulimia with what I go through. It is just as serious as those things. They are literally killing me. I cried so much last night. I have been feeling guilty, horrible. This isn't what I wanted. This is not what I wanted for me. I wrote Crystal a letter last night because I feel like I can express myself 110% so much more via writing than I can with my words. On April 1st, Amber and Crystal broke up after three and a half years of dating. Crystal made the huge decision to call it quits with Amber as they were having complications during their second year together. Heartbroken, Amber realized that they were in fact not in love anymore but still remained best friends. Even after having complications, they continued to share the same living space and bed like nothing's changed since Amber thought it didn't make sense for Crystal to buy another bed. Still living at Crystal's parents and heartbroken, Amber got through it and continued her journey on YouTube. As the second year was coming to a close, I felt unloved and unwanted and I kind of just played it off as I'm an insecure person. I, I always feel like people are mad at me or they dislike me for whatever reason and I tried to use that as an excuse. There were plenty of times where I'd ask Crystal, do you still love me? Do you still think I'm beautiful? Do you still like me as a girlfriend? Do you see yourself with me for a long time? The reason why I would ask her those things, she stopped telling me I was beautiful. It wasn't long after that Ember would eventually land herself a new girlfriend. She began to see someone through the DMs and formed a connection with them right away. A pattern we see again as she gets emotionally attached to people quickly, which nothing wrong with it, as long as the person doesn't 
get hurt at the end. Her new friend being the handsome blonde devil, Destiny, 19-year-old Destiny from Florida. Destiny wanted to visit Amberlynn before making it official, so they set a date for July 1st to meet in person and, and vibe to see if they were compatible. Excited for a fresh start, Amber waited patiently until she was able to move to Florida where she would live with Destiny. Ten days left before meeting Destiny, Amber wanted to change her habits and decided to go vegetarian. Amberlynn was nervous and felt insecure, having self-doubts and thoughts about Destiny, if she would find her attractive or not. Destiny came to visit Amber, and like promised, she asked her out and the two were official. They had chemistry in person right off the bat, just like how they did in the DMs, and quickly moved to Destiny's parents in Florida. We get to see a sudden shift in personality and a new side of Amber Lind, a side that she hadn't shown when she was with Crystal. From what I've seen, we were able to see her authentic self when she was around Destiny, genuinely having fun. It seemed like Destiny broke Amber Lynn's shell and was able to overcome that timid, shy girl. After staying at Destiny's parents for a little bit, they were able to get an apartment with Destiny's long friend. They referred to her as the stripper roommate, so that's who I'm going to call her. In Amberlynn's vlog, that Destiny's cat Gracie, who she had for a long time, went missing. It was speculated that she ran away when someone accidentally left her outside. Amber would later blame it on the roommates for accidentally letting Gracie escape, but no one really knows the truth to this day. Amber expressed that she'd always wanted a cat and eventually adopted her own. Wasabi. This led to the theory that Amber purposely left Gracie out so that she could get a cat of her own, but Amber and Destiny would deny this speculation. Grieving her childhood cat, Destiny was seen on camera distraught, but Amber was so out of touch with Destiny's feelings that she continued to film her in a sensitive time, making people feel some type of way towards Amber's behavior. She would continue to come across as inconsiderate of her partner's feeling and lacked social cues. Around this time, Amber landed a job at an assisted facility home where Destiny also worked at. With a part-time position, Amber was still able to upload her life onto the internet, and as shown in some of the videos, she would record her time at work. Allegedly, she had the habit of filming her clients while having inappropriate conversations with them. She was also known to just lounge around work. This would be confirmed by Amber, saying her job requires no work as she just sat there but her managers would insist her to make herself busy. This led to Amber complaining that she would be on her feet all day at work, resulting in her having to use a mobile scooter while shopping at Walmart. During this time, Destiny is seen with Amber having a great time making it the blueprint for all Walmart vlogs, as it would be a weekly occurrence. Oh, your fingers are supposed to come out of the holes. Mine's too small. <laughs> You're so cute and small and dainty. Look at this. I like them because that's why would you ask if I if I like them? Like, you know, I'm not sure if I do or not. Those are your go-to. You thought I'd be nice to her, baby. It peed. Wait, for real? Yeah. No. On September 27th, 2015, we get a glimpse of frustration from Amber Lynn. Amber shifted blame onto her doctors, but in reality, she should probably listen to the professionals. This will only be the tip of Amber's upcoming habit, the habit of blaming others for her mistakes. I do one thing, but if it's not, then we'll do the test eight weeks from now. No, 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 no. Why don't you just do the test now because you could be wrong. My, My take, take on doctors, doctors sometimes. sometimes is kind of negative because I feel like some doctors are also kind of lazy because I still remember when I knew, I knew I had gallstones, they wouldn't do any tests on me and I'm like, no, my homie, I have gallstones and they wouldn't believe me. A few months later, Vlogmas of 2015, an Amber stripper roommate moved out of the house. We get to see a glimpse of subtle shade thrown at the stripper roommate from Amber. It seemed to me that Amber didn't really enjoy her company and made me wonder what happened. Is her snake still here? Yeah. Okay, well her snake is still here. <laughs> it was fun having a roommate while it lasted. Oh, it stinks like pee. Her dog pees in here too much. She still has a lot of stuff here. Her closets are empty, so... In continuation of Vlogmas, 
Amber opened up about her anxiety disorder, and I believe it was at the time she gave up on being vegetarian. This was also the time where Destiny's aunt gave away her dog to Amberlynn and Destiny, Twinkie Star, being their second pet. Incoming New Year's, which means a fresh start to Amber, her goal for 2016 is to lose 120 pounds. I weighed in at 450 on January 1st. I want to lose 120 pounds this year. Like this is purely just like my January goals, just counting calories. No normal soda, I can eat whatever I want. I'm not adding exercise in January because I work a lot. Already my feet hurt all the time, my heel hurts all the time. Just mainly the important stuff to know. Knowing Amberlynn's past on repeating and attempting weight loss, people caught on with her and were divided. Yes, you are deaf more than your weight, but this is about health. You've gained 100 pounds since I started watching and another 100 can come easily. You won't be able to work or walk at that point so what good is it if you are more than your weight if you are on a road to being bedridden and needing help for daily activities while being only in your 20s. You get defensive at times but it's simply out of concern, most of us are just genuinely concerned. It seems like you both are in denial because you both continue to eat the way you do. You both have to change your relationship with food. This is a serious disease that leads to life-threatening medical issues and death. We wouldn't watch a crack addict and say it's okay because she's a good person. Food is a drug. Super morbid obesity is serious. It's not about your personality. We all love you. Except the troll's face with rolling eyes. We're just concerned. I applaud you for your honesty. Most would lie. Praying for your resolutions to come to fruition. You deserve it. January 14th, Amber answered some hate comments, and here's some I like to highlight for this video. This isn't really like a hate comment, but it was like in a very long paragraph where it was kind of like, whoa, like a lot at once. And I'm just like, they said, I've been watching for a while and noticed that Destiny is eating a lot lately too. Wondered if she was a binge eater also. Destiny is not eating a lot too. I'm not sure what you guys are talking about. Like, Average human is supposed to eat like three square meals a day. Destiny probably eats two to three times a day. She is actually a pretty decent eater. For the most part, she does eat like a lot of fruits and vegetables. Going back to Amber's New Year's goal to lose 120 pounds, she thought it would be a good idea to go vegan. I'm not gonna become vegan. I appreciate your guys' like opinions. Your guys' is like, you can do it. You could be a vegan. I appreciate all that. No, I can't do it. I really would fail completely. Every single person who went on a vegan diet, plant-based diet, they lost their diseases. Like people with diabetes, people with cancer chose the vegan diet instead and their cancer went away. It was freaking amazing. And if anyone out there knows me, you know that I don't like medication. You know that I'm a worry wart and I feel like I have every disease in the world, but I have hypochondriac. I would rather be a vegan than have to take any medicine. I wanna start off this video by apologizing to everybody, especially vegans. In that video, I was extremely foolish. I hadn't done a single drop of research. I had zero knowledge on veganism, what happens in slaughterhouse, and what is in animal products. I'm so amazed with all the research I've done and everything I've learned. I can't preach this. I can't tell, tell you, you guys, guys to change or think, think about changing the way that you are in your life if I don't do it myself. I'm going to become a vegan. It's gonna be a challenge because trust me, there are animal products that I like. She went into debt about failing being vegetarian and decided to go vegan. For some reason i would like to say that i also can relate to amber in a way for setting up a goal and getting really into it for the first couple of days many including myself think it's amber in a high obsessed with the idea of planning out her weight loss but when it's time to actually put in the physical work she taps out less than a week of being vegan Amberlynn couldn't handle it anymore and ended the vegan era. I don't know what it was. I, I did have a really bad dream. I'm just like, oh my god, I don't know if I could do this, blah, blah, And I happened to eat cheese that day. Trust me, there are animal products that I like. I'm done calling myself a vegan because it's not fair, I guess. This is around the time people got more irritated with her because her supporters wanted to see her succeed. They became upset at her for catering more to a specific audience through video centering food as it brings in the most views. One of her most viewed video, what a 500 pound girls eat in a day. Amber takes the camera to vlog her adventure around town. Well, 
more like Destiny taking Amber to town. Along with their food adventures, Destiny and Amberland invited their ex-roommates, 16-year-old sister Libby, to come along with them. Their relationship with Libby goes as far as Amberlynn being comfortable enough to let Libby make her own vlog and upload it on her channel, as seen in this video. We all have a joke that Libby's our kid because we buy her food and we buy her toys. <laughs> toys? <laughs> it either makes it sound like I'm five or it makes it sound like you're buying me like dildos. I'll let them try to figure that try out. Try to guess which one it is. I don't know how, how my angles are, but okay. Um, hey guys, so... Libby would take the role of a side character included in vlogs more often, being one of Destiny and Amber's go-to friend. People thought Amber's behavior towards Libby was predatory as she would make uncomfortable and sexual jokes around her, but Destiny didn't see anything wrong with it. I mean, she's friends with her ex-roommate's little sister after all, so of course she sees nothing wrong with it. Transitioning to Amberlynn's sudden change in content. Mukbang. A Korean eating show popularized in the West, with that came a new wave of influencers called mukbangers. Amberlynn, a rising star during this time, followed the trend uploading her first eating show on May 6, 2016, being one of her most viewed mukbangs ever. This will only encourage her to upload more mukbangs, causing her to disregard her weight loss plan. I love them. And just to warn you, I eat like three at once. Amber and Destiny moved again to Kentucky in concern of Destiny's family, something that wasn't really disclosed and honestly, I'm not bothered enough to look more into it. Hey you guys, so honestly, I feel like I need to vent, I need to talk, I need to get it out, I need to just scream about it, be like, what the actual fuck is happening? Bored and craving drama, she uploaded a video titled, My Aunt Left Me Because I'm Fat, where she would talk about her aunt ghosting her, for being fat. My aunt has completely stopped talking to me. She blocked me on Facebook and the reasoning is because I'm fat. Okay. And she was there when I needed someone to talk to. It's confusing that a family member could just cut off all ties because I'm fat. I don't know. Should, should I, I just, just have, have no, no family, family at, all? at all? This was an issue that was resolved later when it came out that Amber was fabricating the story the whole time, painting her aunt as a Villain. Blaming my weight on everything was just like the easiest way to go. Like, of course, you can get, you know, overweight, that's normal, but to become so morally obese, there's something wrong. And I kind of wanted to ignore all that and just be like, oh, my aunt doesn't talk to me because I'm fat. That's really all I want to say regarding that is no, my aunt, you know, she didn't stop talking to me because I'm fat. She stopped talking to me because of the issues I brought upon her, I guess. And if she's watching this, I'm so sorry. I really just, I wish I could change who I am as a person because I really want my aunt back. The reason why I think she chose this story is because she wanted to use fat phobia as a distraction for her negative behavior. She also went deeper to confess all the lies about her and Destiny. I told you guys that Destiny has not gained weight since she's been with me. I've said that at least a hundred times. Destiny is not eating a lot too. I'm not sure what you guys are talking about. Destiny did give me permission to talk about her weight and just explain to you guys that I have been trying to protect her feelings. We like moved in together apartment. She weighed 181 pounds and as of today she weighs 206. On her body structure, of course, that's really horrible and I feel really bad and I blame myself so much. I just, I want her to lose weight more than I want myself to lose weight because I care about her and love her more than I love myself. And when I see her eat something that's bad for her, it breaks my heart because she doesn't understand nutrition like I do. I just want to be a healthy person. Like this video is so raw, you guys. Fuck. Fuck me. Like damn. This video was proof to her viewers that Amber has the habit of spewing lies, creating her own narrative online to avoid accountability. Accountability, something that she is afraid to face. Struggling with hate comments, Amberlyn does nothing but put her energy into them. In fact, she believed criticism is just another form of hate, taking no responsibility, and believing people are just being fat phobic. I get it's hard to avoid negative comments, but by ignoring it, it would benefit Amber, since she has struggled with mental health in the past. To make people feel bad for her, Amberlynn made the master plan to paint herself as a victim, but in this case, it only drew her more to be a pathological liar and a manipulator. I told myself I would never be with someone who lays a hand on me. My first like live-in relationship was with a girl named Cassidy. I feel very strongly about this and I feel like it's okay for me to say her name because she's transgender now so she's not Cassidy no longer. So I'm able to say her name because she's a once was person. Like Cassidy is no longer here anymore, obviously. I'm not gonna say his new name because we're talking about her. Transgender talk is too confusing so we're just gonna leave it at that. Um In late 2016, 
not learning from her mistakes from the ant situation, Amber uploaded a video titled In an Abusive Relationship. I was raped, but was since deleted. She talked about her relationship with her ex Casey, the ex that she left for Crystal. Just based on the title, you know by now that Amber would be diving into a hard topic to touch, especially for the person who claimed to be in the abusive relationship. I was living in Oklahoma for a bit of that time when it was long distance. By the way, she lived in Arizona. And I was going to Arizona for just a month. Um, we were together a year and a half before I went, you know, like stayed with her for a month. So I was there for like two weeks. And I called my mom and I was like, oh my god, I miss you so much, you know, because I was living with her and my grandma at the time. And on the phone she told me, your grandma said you can't come back to Oklahoma, you can't come live with us. And I was like, what? I had literally nowhere to live. And Cassidy's mom was pissed because I think she knew right then and there she's gonna have to take on me because I had nowhere to go. I didn't have a job. I didn't have anywhere to go. I had no car, I had nothing. But Cassidy's mom let me live there and it was a very small apartment. I'm talking like, there were like no door. Um, Cassidy and I ended up having to use the living room as our bedroom. It was just, it wasn't good, but I was so happy. I was like, I'm gonna live with my girlfriend. Like we're so in love. Then after about, I want to say six months or so, things started, you know, kind of changing and shifting. I don't really know if I want to like go into like grave detail. I noticed we started arguing a little bit more. Just over stupid, stupid, stupid stuff. Like I can tell you that right now. I still remember the first time she ever got physical. We had a laundry room in the apartment complex we were living in and we were walking to the laundry room. And I remember back then I would do our laundry for us. I didn't really like people touching my laundry. I still really don't, but I let Destiny do it because I trust her. But I had this weird thing of like people touching my laundry, whatever. So um, she was helping me carry, I guess, laundry to the laundry room. I don't remember really what we were arguing about, but I know it must have been like really stupid, probably about the laundry, blah, blah, blah. And she was carrying her clothes. I'm pretty sure I remember and I was like carrying mine. And then I'm, I want to say this happened. It's been six, seven years. So memories are kind of like fade in here and there. But I do remember us being on the sidewalk and I remember her dropping what was in her hands and she took me by the throat and she started yelling at me. I was like, what? And I think at the time, what shocked me the most was the fact that she was doing it in such a public place. Like there was nobody around that I remember. And like, I was like crying. Like she literally was having me by the throat, just like screaming at me. And then, you know, she let go obviously. And I think I was so shocked and so numb to the situation that I kind of just let it be. I didn't ever think twice about it. Like, oh my God, is she gonna start like abusing me? And um, she never really did that again. She would randomly like pinch me if I made her really mad. and. I didn't even think anything of that then either. Honestly, I didn't at all. And I want to say, we've been together for about three years now at this point, and I feel myself slowly, I stopped being like sexually attracted to her. I loved her though. I know that. I don't know if it was like a best friend thing, but I stopped just feeling that like connection, I guess. So when it came to intimacy, I want to say about a little bit after like two years of being together, it started to dwindle. Um, ugh. I don't even know how to share this, but I'm gonna have to. Um, Destiny knows all about this, by the way. Like it's something like I really needed to let her know about me. Um, okay, so Cassidy was very sexually strived, like, is that even a thing? I don't know. She really thought I was attractive. She really was sexually attracted to me, and she always wanted to, like, have sex. And I stopped feeling that for her. Like, I didn't tell her that. I would just, like, make up things like, oh, I don't feel good, or, oh, I'm on my period, like, even though I wasn't. And just little things like that. And it made her fucking pissed. Um, when you say no to someone, whether you've been with them for, like, a month, or whether you've been, been with them for, like, six years, if you say no to a sexual act, your partner should accept that. That is where I firmly stand. And she would literally sit there and beg me. At first it was like cute little begs, like, oh, come on, baby, you know, whatever. But then as time gradually went on, it became, you're going to fucking touch me whether you like it or not. And I was like, you can't force me. And little did I know she can. Um, that's when she started punching me a lot. She would, she would aim for my belly. Um, I don't think she ever actually hit me in the face. Her favorite spot was my stomach. She would punch me really hard in my stomach. She'd punch me like around right here a lot. She'd punch me on my arms and she would continuously do it until I agreed to make love to her or have sex, whatever you want to consider it. Um, so not only was I being physically abused, but I was pretty much being like raped. That is what I consider it because I continuously would say no to her. It was such like a bad, just like a bad mixture of everything. And this would go on. This would happen probably weekly. Um, <laughs> here are the tears. I was trying to be strong for this video. <laughs> a lot of people would ask, why didn't I hit her back? Why didn't I leave her in that, you know, in that stance? <laughs> I loved her. Um. This huge claim will not only be detrimental to Casey, but will backfire. Of course, you as the audience can decide who to believe and what not to, but Casey made a video defending himself and debunking Amberlynn's claim. Okay. 
no intro, no nothing like that, no funny business. Today, I was told by my fiance, someone messaged her on Facebook, and it was a link to a video. It was a video of my ex, my ex Amber. And I asked her, what about it? Because, I mean, me and Amber broke up six years ago, and I don't care to have contact with her. Yes, she's messaged me and tried to add me on Facebook. I won't add her. I've added her once before. We tried to be friends, but it didn't work out when she started trying to add my mom and my best friend. And I asked her why, and we got an argument. I'm just like, you know what? I can't do this. You're trying to add all these people on my Facebook that you argued with and tried to keep me away from when we were together. My fiance told me that she's calling me an abuser and a rapist. That got my blood boiling. Everything in that video was such bull that I can't even, I can't even describe the bullshit that was in that video. We were together from the time I was 15 to the time I was 18 years old. It was pretty good, you know, it was fine in the beginning. I was just getting into a new relationship and then all of a sudden there's someone else that's there that she needs to make sure to feed. Yeah, it made her mad. But I fought for Amber to be there because she didn't have nowhere to go. You know, it was whatever. I fought for her to stay. They wanted to be homeless. We were up one night. I don't remember why we argued, but she grabbed my arm with her nails. First time. I, I didn't know what to make of it, really. I'm 16 years old. I didn't know what- Now the thing was she said with the laundry, that's a big false. Wanna know how I know that? Because me and my mom would do her laundry. She wasn't getting up to do laundry. She maybe did it a couple of times, a handful of times, probably counting on my one hand. The bag and choking her? I never, ever did that. Ever. The places she said about being hit, those were on me. Those were the exact places she hit me. I was the one being abused. And I will say this, I may, I may have laid a hand on her a few times, that was in self-defense. I didn't do it, and I damn well did not rape her. I did not rape her. Period. To recap, Casey talked about how Amber was the jealous type and is the controlling one out of the two. He also claimed that she was the abusive one. An example of was not supporting Casey and flipping out on him when he came out to Amber as transgender. As a response to this mess, Amber took to the internet by uploading a video of herself reading a poem. Her video, titled Speaking Up, is Amberlynn's side of the story. By expressing herself in an artistic way, she hoped people would side with her, but many believed she was fabricating her story. Let's see. Who does everyone believe? Let's start gambling our life, rolling dice like knives on a platter. So why are you going to play your sims and call me twice? Twice the lies, twice the price, twice the vulgar manipulated web. Spider to friend, friend to spider, enemy grudge and love. No, I am not perfect in any way. No inside the lines, no glitter outside, no gracefully worded rhymes. No playing perfect like you've begun. Begun a show that keeps haunting me. I don't bleed for you. I don't need you. Social media needs this. A drama story. Something to decipher. Something to dissect. Twitter Knowing what you did and saying you didn't. Such a lovely story. There are three sides to every situation. And the third one, the truth, will never be known. I want to give Amberlynn the benefit of the doubt because I am the person to side with the victim first, but since it was never resolved illegally and knowing Amberlynn's problematic past for spewing lies and I can't say or pin what exactly happened, I also wanted to give Casey the benefit of the doubt. He has his own YouTube channel and he seems like a chill dude who doesn't want negative attention, unlike Amber. But wait, it gets worse. Obsessed with reading hate comments, Amber used her friend's Facebook account and posed as a man called Damon White. And joined a Facebook group about her. She began to comment under posts defending herself as Damon White, engaging with the members on a daily basis. At first, People were fooled and thought this guy, aka Amber, was just being genuine and is playing devil's advocate. 
Ember even got Michael B. Petty, a huge Amberlynn Reed reaction channel at this time, fooled, since he was also in the group. Now, I was in that group. I remember being in that group. I remember communicating with this person and being like, God, this guy's fucking annoying. Because there were people in there that would defend her, but the way that this guy would defend her was, first of all, he was always there. He was always there. In every single comment, he was fucking there. And then he would gaslight people and then turn it around, like, every single time. Come to find out, this person was Amber Lynn Reed. The members grew suspicious and eventually kicked Damon White out of the Facebook group. It was later revealed by Amber's friend that Damon White was indeed Amber. What a weird and funny situation. This further proved that Amber was obsessed with keeping up with the hate and people believed that she went undercover to try to make herself look good. Who knows what other sock account she has. By now, we kind of know what type of person she is. I mean, judging from this video alone of talking about her YouTube idol, one of the most controversial and yet successful YouTuber ever, Amber Lynn began to get inspiration from Trisha Paytas and even stole some of her characteristic as part of her YouTube persona. She started to troll her audience to get a negative reaction as that's the only way she knows how to get attention. I feel like I could marry orange chicken. I would wake up every day and fall in love with it all over again. I woke up this morning feeling like a chicken nugget. The hate continued as she addresses them, putting energy into it instead of something that will benefit her, such as her mental health. She's aware that people are opinionated online and is bothered by it, but at the same time, Amber is skilled at causing trouble, almost as if she's doing it on purpose. In this video, Amber Lind talked about quitting her job. Nothing wrong about it, but she went to her defense by saying that she moves a lot at home versus when she's at work, so it justifies her quitting. In other words, staying at home would allow Amber to exercise more, I guess. Again, defending herself from people when she owns no one an explanation why she quit. Who cares, right? Not too long after that video, about a week later, Amber revealed that she and Destiny broke up. She tried to put a fake smile on camera the week of their breakup, hiding the fact that she was devastated. Um, Destiny broke up with me. And... We had so much planned. I forgot to mention, Destiny gave Amber a promise ring because Amber wouldn't shut up about marriage. Destiny would later reveal that she didn't see herself marrying her because Amber was too difficult to be with. They would get into fights. Destiny also revealed and claimed that Amber got into a fist fight with Destiny's mom and the two would clash often. Overall Amber belonged in Bad Girls Club because she had an attitude. For the longest time, Amber made it seem like the two were so in love. In reality, Destiny was done with Amber's bullshit and was ready to leave. To add, she also did a Q&A after the breakup, milking the situation, which, good for her. Destiny broke up with Amber Lynn because apparently, she wanted to work on herself. Confused, Amber asked why can't they work together as a couple, which is valid, but it didn't feel right to Destiny. A month later, Destiny got into a new relationship with Dana who worked at the same facility as Destiny and Amber. It was speculated that Destiny started to form a relationship behind Amber's back. Another speculation was that Destiny emotionally disconnected herself from Amber and needed another support system, and it so happened to be her co-worker. It was actually confirmed in a recent video Destiny uploaded onto her YouTube. She pretty much admitted to emotional cheating despite denying it. This is something that I applaud Amber for, for being understandable of Destiny's decision and being civil. Well, she had no choice but to be civil to get her own ways. They still remained friends after the breakup and even slept in the same bed after Amber convinced Destiny. Even though, Destiny revealed that she didn't want to sleep with her at first, but because Amber was so manipulative, she agreed. Remember back when Crystal and Amber slept in the same bed after the breakup? I hate to speculate, but it could be because of Amber's past trauma with people leaving her. Still, it's not right to coerce her ex into sleeping with her. With that being said, the Destiny era came to an end with Amber left stranded as a single lady. But, not for long. Amber did a drunk with me video where she answered some questions from her audience. She began to make a fool out of herself, but all in all was entertaining. Five tips you can spice up the relationship. 
<laughs> who am I like why am I talking about this okay um it really depends on the person I'm just gonna go by like what my friends have told me um but obviously toys <laughs> what? 50 shades darker though no I still haven't even seen that yet like desperate to keep destiny around still Amber befriended Dana by gifting her stuff and buying their friendship Dana known to take sloppy seconds from Amber even accepted old clothes that don't fit Amber anymore being Amber's personal dumpster in my opinion Amber saw how happy Destiny and Dana were and grew even more lonely and thought the only way for people to be around her is to buy their trust. Follow us <laughs> on all social media. Goodbye. Goodbye, bitch. Don't worry though, because not too long after, Amber got into a new relationship. Meet Rebecca Williams, who goes by Becky. Becky was a new viewer and reached out to Amber after reading hate comments about her. She felt bad and started to engage in a conversation with Amber. Becky during this time also had her heart broken by a cheating ex, so she wanted to comfort Amber by giving her compliments. Although Becky admitted not wanting to be in a relationship too soon, she ended up dating Amber Lynn anyways after talking some more. In a new relationship, she wanted to impress Becky. Will she succeed though? In the honeymoon stage, we got to see Amber out and about with Becky on their first vacation together. Ready to move on, literally, Amberlynn moved out of her place she had with Destiny and moved in with Becky and her two friends, Eric and Ricky, a happily married couple. It was around the same time that Amberlynn befriended Becky's friend. Unfortunately, they had a falling out that I won't get too much into, but apparently Amberlynn was being a fake friend to Rafe and only talked about food and YouTube whenever they were around. Rafe pretty much thought Amber was boring and fake. Rafe would only play a minor role in the Amberverse, perishing away from the vlogs, never to be seen again. Going back to the Destiny situation, Amber would invite Dana and Destiny on a double date. People felt weird about the concept of being friends with an ex, which led to the conspiracy that Amber Lynn was still in love with Destiny while being in a relationship with Becky. Poor Bexter. I mean, to be fair. Amber has shown herself buying Destiny and Dana whatever they want, putting more effort into building a relationship with the couple versus building a relationship with Becky. You know, the famous quote by Chinese philosopher Sun Tzu, keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer. It seemed like Amber was trying to sabotage Dana and Destiny's relationship, but spoiler alert, Dana ended up cheating on Destiny the first year they were together, so I guess Amber Lynn didn't have to do anything Skipping over Vlogmas of 2017 and transitioning to New Year's, Amber's new goal was to eat healthier, per usual, but same if I'm honest, so no harsh feelings. Both Amberlynn and Becky would partake in a healthier lifestyle together, similar to when she was with Crystal. Amberlynn apparently became more motivated when her partners would take on the same challenges as her. I can see why it benefits her though. The only problem is, if Amberlynn fails, she can use her partner as an excuse which she would be doing in the near future. She began to document her healthy food intake, cooking her own meals and forcing vegetables down her throat, which didn't last long because takeouts are too good to resist. Not only was Amberlynn taking care of her physical health, but she finally took the extra step to improve her mental health by visiting her doctor and getting prescription meds for her depression. On top of her own personal issues, the hate comments would get to Amber as it would spiral her down more into a slope. Amber sat down to record her feelings and struggles on the constant hate she gets from her haters, or in this universe, the hater nation. Hey guys. Sometimes I just feel like I need to talk. I don't know. I just feel very alone and frustrated with life. Are they liking my content? I scroll through and it's like every comment, and I'm not even exaggerating, like every comment is horrible. Horrible. I might end up just like messaging my doctor because um I just need to talk to someone someone who I know like won't judge me because it's not like this isn't like my personality <laughs> like I feel like I have a good personality knowing what you did and saying you didn't such a lovely story she would also go further to explain her depression causing her to lash out I do understand Amber for wanting to vent and for wanting an outlet to do that but for her YouTube should be the last resort to do so. Well, it probably was because Amberlynn wanted validations from strangers online because she couldn't get validation anywhere else. Even though, for the longest time, her audience tried to convince her to get a therapist, but she refused. 
mocking people for not being her doctor or a therapist. People came to the realization that she doesn't take her mental health seriously as she uses it to make people feel sorry for her, all while profiting off of it. The user, Laura K. wrote, When you first started her weight loss journey this year, I remember 90% of the comments on those videos were so supportive, I was impressed how little hate there was. But when you went back to her old ways, the hate came back. I think there is something to think about there. Another user, Stephanie Beans, wrote, This is giving me Trisha Paytas vibes all over. You troll then cry? Like what? I'm a big girl too and I can see where you're coming from but at the same time it's all your fault. Just like me being big is my fault. The difference is that you honestly don't give a fuck. You can get a job and lose weight. I'm 350 pounds and 5 feet 4 and work for the post office and I'm doing it. I'm a mail lady so I drive the truck and I walk to deliver packages. I have extremely bad anxiety over everything and have super bad depression. But to sit here and be a walking excuse is old. You're in a house almost all day and you're just complaining gggg like get out and do something else. Of course you're depressed. You're only blaming your anxiety and depression because it's easier then to actually say that you're the reason this is all happening. I know a lot of it is that you're depressed but you have to make changes and actually push through them. I don't understand how you can post yourself on the internet though with all this anxiety you have. Like I literally could never. Sometimes the shit you say seems fishy to me woman shrugging light skin tone I'm not a hater I just want to see you do better man. This pretty much summed up the majority of Amber's audience as she frustrated more and more people. Going back to square one was she will have to try again to get her viewers on her good side. With a new challenge in mind and the beginning of a new cycle, Amber Lynn would start a 30 day challenge with Becky again. She also launched an Instagram account, Curvy Calories, to keep track of her weight fluctuation. Unfortunately. She would fall off again, frustrating her supporters for giving up on a challenge so early on without even trying. This was around the time where she introduced her dark side. I just get very angry if I don't get my way during a binge and I feel like I'm being possessed by somebody. The binge monster. A side of Amberlynn where she would black out and binge on food, consuming thousands in one sitting. According to Becky, the binge monster would sometimes lash out on her and verbally abuse her whenever she tries to chime in. In other words, Becky would sometimes experience aggression from Amber. She would later use the binge monster as an excuse for her own actions, but in reality, the binge monster is nothing else but Amber. To solve this issue, she would go on Weight Watchers, a program where the person would have to log in their food and whatnot. Amber uploaded a video of her off-track day when she binged on snacks and other junk. People gave her the shit and was upset to see her once again fail her planned challenge. I mean, we are all human and make mistakes. It's just in her case. It was the point where it became mega frustrating. In response to the hate and criticism, she uploaded a video a week later making a statement. Self online and people should be allowed to kind of, you know, state their opinions on what I'm doing or like the outfit I'm wearing, you know. There's such a huge difference between, oh, you know, I don't really like Amberlynn's shirt today, but or between like, Amberlynn looks like a fat whale on that shirt, like she needs to get out. What I'm trying to tell you guys is I'm done. I am done with what you say, with what you ask. Should I just go get weight loss surgery? I'm done. Like, with it all. Is it... Yeah! A literal pincher bug just was on me. Around the same time, behind the scenes, multiple viewers also took concern for a Twinkie star, Amber's pet chihuahua she received from Destiny's mom. People called animal control on Amber for overfeeding Twinkie to the point where she was deemed overweight. People theorized that no one in the household took care of the pet's health and neglected them. To make matters worse, the length of Twinkie's nails was overgrowing, which further showed that Amber was being neglectful. Unfortunately, this was not the first animal abuse allegation. When Amber Lynn and Destiny were co-raising Wasabi, Amber was known to not feed the cat and change the litter box. The way they also handled their pets put a bad taste in people's mouth. We're gonna take the cats to the vet, and that we take the Wasabi to the vet. I never took these cats to the vet. Wasabi came with his shots and with Jack's I think once he was with me and Damon, I got I went to the feed store and got his shots and just did them myself. The whole time we were together, we did not go to the vet. <laughs> I know she said that we did, and I didn't realize she was telling people that, so. June of 2018, Amberlynn was fat shamed at a restaurant. In the video, fat shamed caught on the camera, a man in the background says, Good lord, the beanbag is in a hurry. Good lord, the beanbag's in a hurry. Good lord, the beanbag's in a hurry. 
When you walked out before Becky and the man walked in and said, wow, the beanbag is in a hurry, the exact words were, good lord, the beanbag is in a hurry. Seeing as fatphobic, Amber Lynn took it like a champ, being a phrase that would be quoted by her in the Hater Nation. During this time, Amber was in her prime on YouTube, getting a separate audience from her usual and babies, the Hater Nation, built by reaction channels such as Michael B. Petty, Zachary Michaels, and Cunt and more. They would comment on her lies and mundane life. They even hosted an online event called AmberCon. I think she knows that by like calling us out, it's going to drive more views. But she yeah. pretends like she's the victim and that like what we're doing is so awful and cruel well bitch the way you get rid of us is you pr ignore us you just pretend right. that we don't exist don't be fooled though amber isn't so nice herself as a clip of her fat shaming another girl resurfaced we went into texas for house today and when we went to go sit down there was this girl who you know to me looked like she was maybe like 50 pounds bigger than me i can't really say i asked destiny like i have this like crazy thing where if i see someone that's like really morbidly obese like i am i'll literally ask whoever i'm with hey is that person bigger than me i don't know why it's sickening i don't know why i do it i don't know if it's because i want to feel better about myself or i want to understand how other people visually see me but looking at her thinking i'm so sad for her like i'm sad that she's she's obese and i noticed how other people stared at her to be fair it was Amberlynn being insecure that she had to reassure herself that she's the prettiest one at the restaurant. This isn't the only time she talked about another person's weight though. She's famous for pointing out Becky's weight and making slick comments. She would sometimes purposefully record unflattering angles of Becky as a way to humiliate her. Oh, you look so cute. Do you need to make it a little bit bigger? I don't know. I think I'm out. you just gotta lose a little bit of weight. I know you can do it. People try to call her out on her behavior towards her partner, but she never addressed it. Also, I believe during this time, Amber also attacked Michael B. Petty on his weight as he was also on his weight loss journey and was successful. Skimming over her video about FaceTiming her ex while being with Becky to the infamous Amberlynn trilogy, Struggles of Being Me, where she talked about how hard it is to be Amberlynn Reed. First thing I do is I got on a treadmill and I was I turned it on and I was trying to walk and it wouldn't move. I was too heavy. I was too heavy and I was like, are you serious? This is so embarrassing. Like, I was so embarrassed. It was just kind of pathetic that I couldn't, you know, use the treadmill that I wanted to go on from the begin with. People take most of these things for granted that I have to deal with on the daily. I like to do my own laundry, so I'm able to put it in the washer just fine. But Becky has to get it out of the washer for me. I can't, one, reach my arm in and bend down and grab my laundry. I can't go to a movie theater unless the arms go up. And I don't take up two seats. I know that's like a big misconception, but I like to have two seats. All in all, I agree with her, but on the other hand, she came across to me as tone deaf and lacked self-awareness. Her audience criticized her for uploading a video centering around her struggles instead of viewing it as a way to work on herself. In other words, it felt like Amber Lynn was painting herself as a victim again, which angered her audience. It's frustrating to see a woman who earns thousands of dollars every month and has the resources to get professional help. But instead, she takes the time and energy to eat online and profit off of her addiction and then comes back online to play the victim. To put the cherry on top, her comment section got bombarded with comments about her previous video. The video where she FaceTimed Destiny. Catching up to the negative comments, she uploaded a video titled, I read hate comments and this is what happened, where she would defend her actions. I'm just in such a negative space from reading that crap. Oh my God, I feel like, wow. A lot of people didn't side with her, affecting her mental health even more. I feel like I need to actually share this because I need people to know that like mental things are is scary, like, from the beginning, people despised Becky just as much as Amber Lind as she also got her own flaws and faults. But it all shifted to Becky getting her own support and backbone. Being that, Becky struggled to stand up against Amber and people felt bad. Also, Becky was seen helping Amber with everything when it comes to groceries, cleaning, emotional support, driving, and pretty much being Amber's helper. I believe Amber noticed the mass support Becky had garnered during this time, which led Becky being in the forefront of Amberlynn's YouTube channel for a bit. On September 11, 2018, Becky made a video on Amberlynn's channel revealing a secret. 
The audience connected to Becky and sympathized for her more than ever. The only problem was that it felt like Amberlynn was using Becky's journey and story as a way to gain views and to profit off of her. Her video received positive attention and support, which led her to continue uploading her own videos. Instead, this time it was about Becky's coming out story. Growing up my entire life, I grew up in a very uh, Christian household. You know, we'd go down there and my great uncle's a preacher, so we'd listen to him preach and stuff. And uh, I grew up with a strong connection to God. Also, along with that came my a, a little bit closed-mindedness. Rumor had it that Amber was actually too lazy to pump out weekly videos that she had to use her girlfriend to create content. But this was just a small speculation and rumor. Around this time, Amberlynn addressed the comments calling her narcissist. She then changed her Instagram user to narcissistic goddess. In response, Amber's bad habit caught onto her, and it seemed at this point it was her rock bottom. And in the video, she was very emotional, and it was clear that she finally took some type of responsibility and realization. What will Amber do though? Well, Amber sought help from people on Instagram instead of professional help. Amberlynn revealed to us that her dietitian blocked and ghosted her. Someone on Instagram who claimed to be a dietitian reached out to Amber and asked if she had questions. Less than a week of talking, Amber claimed she got blocked due to the hate spreading onto the dietitian. People were going crazy in my comments, and I want you guys to know that this person, she was my dietitian, but she was also a subscriber. She was a viewer. She watched my videos, and she read the comments. People were saying horrible things about, oh, Amberlynn probably doesn't have a dietitian. Saying horrible, horrible things about the information that my dietitian has g given me. I'm confused on why she blocked me. I think the one thing that really got to her was just the comments, and that just really opened my eyes that I can lose anybody due to horrible, just horrible, horrible comments. I blocked the dietitian because of horrible comments. Instead of putting two and two together on the possibilities of what she might have done to get herself blocked, she shifted blame onto her audience. Amber claimed the reason why people continuously leave her is because of the negativity surrounding her channel. This felt like she took this opportunity to paint the narrative. Instead of improving her reputation, she tried to manipulate and guilt her audience into being nicer to her whether she deserved it or not. Pretty much saying people should be nice to her so that she can have friends around her because you know, she claims she has a lot of positivity to give. Don't get me wrong, I'm not dismissing the hate Amberlynn gets because I know and am aware she gets thousands of disgusting comments every day. Some are even threats which are never okay. But what does Amberlynn do? She gives the hate attention instead of putting energy towards her real supporters, the people that actually give her feedback. This led her to earn the reputation of being a negative Nancy. They'll continue to judge because they want something to judge you on. It's that simple. Shrimpgate, the infamous video that cost Amberlynn 10,000 subscribers due to her smug attitude. In the video, she berates her audience and expected people to always support her decisions in regards to her health. Whether her decisions are detrimental or not, she expects kind words. Like, no matter what I do, we're going to get hate for it unless we are doing exactly what you told us to do. But you aren't our moms, you aren't our bosses, you aren't our dads, you aren't our doctors. <laughs> I just think the fact that people can hate on us so hardcore and judge us so hard over the food we put in our mouth is kind of crazy. There's so much more to me. Knowing what you did and saying you didn't, such a lovely story. Think of the other mukbang channels, like the really skinny people. Like, why is that okay? You know, just because you're skinny doesn't mean you're healthy, but I'm not hating on any because I love mukbangs. They just make you feel like you're less alone. I love, I love it, honestly. This being the last straw that broke the camel's back, her audience got fed up and went from being a part of the Anne Babies to being a part of the Hater Nation. This resulted in Amberlynn implementing damage control on Snapchat by putting out an apology. She backtracked and claimed her views have changed since the upload, even though it was only a couple of days prior to the scandal. I just want to like apologize to everyone that I've like upset. Like I said, my last two videos were pre-recorded and I wanted to upload them because I did work on them. I already had them scheduled to go up and my whole like everything, how I feel is completely different. I just, I, I really do apologize. I didn't mean to upset anyone. In the moment, I just really thought I was doing what was best for me. By just taking my weight loss off the internet but i feel like by doing that i lose a lot of people who once supported me and i feel like i kind of lose my mind as well to prove that she's a changed woman she began to go on a health kick again doing workout videos to even coaching becky on exercising this was actually a great move on amber as some 
people grew to be supportive, hoping she would succeed this time. Actually, I would like to note that Amber gets new subscribers weekly, so of course the newer audience would come in blind, encouraging her without knowing her repetitive behavior. What I'm saying is, it's a waste of time supporting this woman because you will only be setting yourself up for disappointment. Unfortunately, but not shocking, Amber Lynn would fall off track making excuses, riling her audience. On top of that, this was around the time when Amy Slayton made a parody impersonating Amber. In my hands, they're clean. I just washed them. Amber was not fond of it and became burnt out on the negativity and posted a video on August 31st of 2019 titled, Leaving YouTube. Before I say anything else, no, Amber Lynn does not deserve vile comments. Amber Lynn wants criticism, but she only wants to hear those she agrees with or comments that fits her narrative. That's why when people tell her, hey, that's wrong and this and that, she views it as hate instead of actual criticism. I began to question myself as a person. I had a moment of weakness where I told myself, I don't think I could do this anymore. I don't think I can live anymore. I don't think I can. In the video, Amber committed that she was going to self harm. She was threatening suicide. I need to take a break. I'm scared to take a break because I don't want to become irrelevant. I don't I don't want any of that. Like I don't want people to forget about me. But Just a day later, September first, she came back to YouTube after her supposedly long hiatus with the video titled I Can't Give Up. Her DMs got flooded with support and compassion when her leaving YouTube video premiered. Upon watching People felt like Amber orchestrated the whole situation to garner sympathy because she knew from the get-go that she would come back since the video was pre-recorded two weeks prior to the upload date. She claimed she reflected on those two weeks but still decided to upload the video even after hinting suicide. People found the situation manipulative and thought it was offensive to throw in her mental health and to gain attention. Hence why people started calling her Victim Lynn for trying to make people feel bad for her. It's all confusing stuff and it surely made more sense when this whole situation was blowing up in real time. We all have different opinions and minus that, she was in a vulnerable state in the video. Yes, but she clearly knew what she was doing when she uploaded it. Uh. She wanted the attention and support she craved so badly. Don't get me wrong again, I'm actually glad that she has real support and a backbone. Heck, I hope she succeeds in life and finds eternal happiness. It's just so frustrating when Amber creates controversy by lying to her audience and contradicts herself. And when it finally catches on to her, she cries wolf. Make it make sense. September 2019. Amber, thriving and living her best life while hanging out with her squad, which consisted of Becky, her true love destiny, and Dana. People were suspicious about Amber Lynn's sudden mood changes whenever Destiny is around. She would be seen from being unmotivated to glamouring herself from head to toe. It seemed like Amber was trying to impress someone and it wasn't Becky. It was revealed that Amber Lynn told Destiny her secret, that she was still in love with her. Poor Becky, honestly. Vlogmas 2019, Day 9 Amber Lynn expressed how Twinkie was shaking in pain, struggling to walk and jump. They went to Walmart to get Twinkie treats that would help her with her joint pain. In the video, she didn't seem at all concerned for Twinkie's health and didn't attempt to take her to the vet. I guess it helps support them. I don't know. Amberlynn oh. brushed it off and took the squad out to Chili's while Twinkie was at home in pain. This caused an uproar and Amber claimed there was no emergency vets in her area, but it was proven a lie when people were able to find a 24-hour vet office 20 minutes away from the Chili's she was at. Amber would never take Twinkie to the vet, but instead gave her aspirin and claimed it was better afterwards. People were repulsed by Amber's reaction to Twinkie's health, but all in all, not shocking. Transitioning into 2020 before quarantine, Amber told her Ann babies to lower their standards because she is aware by now that no matter what goal she set for herself, she's going to fail and disappoint people all over again. Fast forward to actual quarantine, she made a video admitting she trolls her audience by doing clickbait thumbnails, showing herself indulging food and shots of her body on purpose. In fact, in this video, she posed on camera eating a chocolate because she's catering to feeders and you can't tell me or deny that she isn't. She then proceeded to explain how she felt sorry for people 
who lost their job and those dealing with loss during COVID-19. Amber somehow connected the topic to her anxiety, saying how she wished she was the only one who felt the pain and anxiety because she's an empath and doesn't want people to go through it. Furthermore, she complained about how her YouTube views were getting lower and how it affected her income, pretty much emphasizing she's in the same boat as everyone else during this harsh time. This caused people to hate on her as they argued people lost their job from the pandemic and Amber Lynn should be blessed to be able to make an income doing YouTube while everyone else was struggling to pay their rent. Some complained how Amber Lynn has been in quarantine for the past few years on YouTube making money anyways, so what difference did it make for her to complain about quarantine? All in all, she was being insensitive and somewhat bratty. Going back to 2020, and you know what that means, she started a series called Operation Curvy Calories where she would be documenting her food intake, talk about weight loss, exercise, and whatnot to help achieve weight loss. She was supposed to upload 100 episodes worth of Operation Curvy Calories, but lo and behold, a week later, she quit, proving her point that she will fail again and again. Normally, I would say welcome to Operation Curvy Calories, but I feel like Operation Curvy Calories under construction, if you will. I decided that I'm no longer going to be doing it. The problem with Amber is that she's always apologetic for failing her viewers instead of being apologetic to herself. This gave her new audience the impression that she was not taking herself seriously and was purely doing it for the wrong reasons. I believe it was around mid-2020, Becky set up a GoFundMe to help raise money to treat her mom's cancer. The goal was to raise 5k and by helping, Amber Lynn promoted it on one of her video that she will eventually delete for violating YouTube's term of service. People were kind enough to still donate, but a lot of people were confused why Amber could have just paid out of pocket since she was making thousands each month. In the end, she's not obligated to since it's her money, but I'm sure she contributed, right? Well, it's a bit complicated. Becky's mom, Norma, and Amber Lynn did not have a great relationship. Norma found Amber Lynn to be manipulative and toxic, which caused tension and drama between the two. Norma and Becky's sister even took to the internet to throw shade at Amber back in 2019 for neglecting her pets and for being a menace. Well, it isn't confirmed who they were talking about, but fast forward again. An Amberlynn Reed voice memo leaked to the internet by someone who claimed that Norma sent it to her. The day after Norma's surgery, Amber thought it was the right time to make everything about herself by sending Norma a voice memo essentially saying how ungrateful Norma was for not being thankful for the money Amber was going to give her. To note, I don't think Amber Lynn ever gave her the money. We don't have to really go down the line of, oh, you didn't message me, you didn't message me, because I can say the same about you, where not once have you thanked me personally for the money I was going to give you. Amber revealed that she was tired of the negativity Norma brought upon her channel, when in reality, she's the one who brought the negativity herself. Overall, it wasn't the right time to discuss this issue, since Norma was dealing with something that was far more important than Amberlynn's petty drama. Sadly, in August of 2020, Norma passed away from cancer, causing Becky to go into a deeper depression. To make things worse for herself, Amber was not present when Becky's family was picking the headstone. Instead, she stayed in the car making TikTok videos about lesbian porn. Amber defended that she just got out of surgery so she couldn't walk too much, so she sat in the car instead. To counter the backlash she received, she finally addressed the voice memos months later, saying everything the audience saw between Norma and Amberlynn was in the past and had been resolved behind closed doors prior to Norma's passing. Even though they made up at the end, the way Amberlynn talked to her dying mother-in-law was unacceptable, put her in a different perspective as a human being. If anyone disagrees and think this isn't as bad as it is, please re-evaluate. It was also revealed later on a live stream that Becky couldn't mourn her mother's passing properly because she was going through medications and had to take care of Amber since she ate herself to the point she was bedridden. During the time Becky should be grieving, she powered through it to take care of Amber's need, such as feeding and bathing her. Amber Lind would successfully lose 75 pounds after being bedridden. She was able to go on a caloric deficit and was able to walk again. Amber further explained in a video that people take walking for granted and being unable to move was her personal health. In continuation of her success, she started Jenny Craig, a weight loss program, but it only lasted a week when she quit. Jumping into 2021, Becky proposed to Amber with that exciting news. Amber decided to go back on Jenny Craig for the hundredth time. On the third day, she quit Jenny Craig, following it up with a video. 
attempting another 100 days of weight loss challenge, which she attempted to complete. Less than two weeks of the challenge, Amber decided to express her thoughts in one of her videos titled Vulnerability, where she would read her audience what she wrote in her journal. She made sure to point out that she would never have shared her journal entry publicly, but this time, she felt like it was the right thing to do. Whatever that meant, she admitted to making a fool out of herself online and felt like she can't be vulnerable anymore. It's easier to be judged when making mediocre mukbangs and supposed hoard hauls than to be judged for true vulnerability, tears, struggles, and the darkness in my life. Seems like when I need people the most, I'm pushed away harder. The more vulnerable I become, the more open I am, the more hate I receive, which leads me to never wanting to share anything ever again. She then claimed that people are, quote, mental illness shaming her. Note, the reason people are talking about it is purely because they are frustrated. They wouldn't talk about it if they didn't care about Amber in the first place. Yes, some people are assholes, but a huge chunk of her haters or the hater nation used to be an am baby or used to support her she also said that people are fat shaming her and that there are videos out there showing nothing but body shots of amber mocking her weight but from my understanding and from my remembrance amber makes sure to include her body in certain thumbnails and videos on purpose because she knows it would get her clicks and views overall she makes money from exploiting her body and mental illness online of course people are going to talk about it because she pushes and encourages it to me, this was another way for her to paint herself as a victim. To convince people even more, Amberlynn uploaded another video in response to the vulnerability video by essentially saying people should be more open-minded and hear her side of stories instead of hitting her for her physical appearance. What is really happening is that the majority of her audience are judging her for her actions and her smug attitude. I also like to add that Amberlynn and Becky moved into their own apartment at this point. Eric and Ricky are no longer roommates. In the middle of 2021, Amberlynn would start weekly live stream during one of them titled, We Have Something to Tell You. Amber and Becky revealed that they've broken up. I guess I'm gonna go ahead and just say that we have broke up. It was initiated by me. And what are we gonna accomplish if I go somewhere? Or if I just leave her? That This isn't a messy thing where one of us is just like, peace out, yeah, have we're fun. Not, we're not this is the out. home that we made together, but peace the fuck out. Yeah. Like, what? Like to keep it short, Becky felt like in order for her to grow as a person, she had to let Amber go since she was holding her back. Similar reason why Destiny broke up with Amber. Becky felt like she was nothing but a full-time caretaker since she had to quit her job and stayed home to take care of Amber. All the while, Amber had nothing but money to contribute to Becky. She was never interested in Becky because she was in love with Destiny. Breaking up would also help Becky grieve her mother properly and to finally heal since taking care of needy Amber trained her mentally and physically. Paige Knight on YouTube wrote, I'm sad for Amber, but so, so proud of Becky. Good for her for not staying sucked into this codependency and manipulation. In the end, they wanted different things in life, but promised to always be there for each other. With nowhere to go, Becky had no choice but to stay in the apartment with Amber until she had enough money to move. Since she didn't have any money because all her income was through Amber's check, Amber made Becky partake in her live streams, promising to give her a paycheck for each live stream. Part of the reasoning was that Amber felt anxious and would need to rely on Becky to be the entertainer for the live streams. The audience later found out that Amber kept the money and claimed all of it went into Becky's other half of the rent. Since they weren't a couple anymore, she made Becky pay rent for her stay, even though she knew Becky had no real income. People speculated that this was one of Amber's ways to have financial power over Becky to easily control and manipulate her. Flashback to when Amber Lynn begged Destiny to sleep in the same bed as her after the breakup and Crystal. Let's just say she did the exact same thing to Becky. This was when people started to point out her odd behavior after every breakup. She has a thing for sleeping in the same bed with her ex. Tension grew between Amber Lynn and Becky as time moved on. In their live stream sessions, the ex couple are seen throwing shade at each other and would argue. It felt like Amber was still bitter at Becky, but behind the scenes, she already moved on and started seeing someone else. It was only about two weeks after the breakup that someone DM'd Amber on Instagram, giving her compliments. Yeah, I know. Becky did the exact same thing before they dated. Weird, huh? In one of her live streams, Amber Lynn was seen FaceTiming her new girlfriend. She called Wifey. Yeah, we call each other babe, baby, like all of it. Um, What is Wifey's favorite thing about you? Do you want her to just text it? Your heart, you are the kindest and most giving person I've ever had the pleasure to have in my life. I'm leaving. Knowing what you did and saying you didn't, such a lovely story. 
To protect Wifey's privacy, Amber would refuse to show her face and would avoid calling Wifey by her legal name. Sucks to say, Amber would eventually dox Wifey and people found out her name, Jade. Panicked, Amber would backtrack and tell her viewers that she and Jade are no more hinting that they have broken up. People didn't fall for it because Amber would introduce another girlfriend who the audience can tell is still Jade. Instead of this time, she would introduce her as Alex as a way to trick people into believing she and Jade truly broken up. Just three months of knowing each other, Amber kicked Becky out of the apartment as Jade packed her luggages and traveled across the states to live in the apartment. People started to question Jade's motive for moving in with someone she barely knew, leading people to dig up her past. To this day, Amber refuses to show her girlfriend's face on camera, only parts of her body, because she's holding onto the narrative that the new girlfriend is not Jade, but Alex. Or is it because of something else? Who knows? In the same month, Amber Lynn went onto a newer reaction channel, Olordi is Jordy's live stream, and sent him a voice memo trying to befriend him. I see the chat and they're saying that this is a trap and I'm a manipulator. Unfortunately, they're wrong and that's- Emotional manipulation. Don't trust her, Jordy. Amber, I'm being warned. She's playing you. It's a trap. Being Amberlynn Reed, I get it. The community around me, but I can tell you I'm being completely genuine right now. So I hope that you're able to like look past that. It felt like she was trying to manipulate Jordy into becoming her friend so that he would make positive content about her. This wasn't the first time Amber tried to convince a reaction channel into making nicer content about her. In the past, she had the habit of DMing reaction channels such as Zachary Michael and even Karina Kaboom, two big channels, pretty much trying to stir the pot behind the scenes. It didn't go as planned though as Amber despises Jordy and everyone else today. In January of this year, yes, we are almost caught up to date, Amber received a box of goodies from a supporter of hers. The box was filled with Australian candies, as well as Weight Watchers snacks for Amber to try. After doing her best not to binge and go for no takeouts for the month of January, Amber Lynn would give in and binge on the snacks. She pointed fingers at the subscriber, blaming them for her binges without holding her accountable for having no self-control. She started to ask people kindly not to send her food-related items as it would trigger her. In the same month, a Belgian YouTuber, Aline Dessine, made a two-part documentary-style video on Amber. Aline's point of view of Amber were more positive than the average viewer, spinning the story that Amber is bullied on YouTube for simply being fat. She continued to paint Zachary Michael as the main perpetrator, editing them to be the reason why Amber gets so much hate. Aline would mislead her audience by not addressing why people dislike Amber Lynn. But if you're watching this video, you know why. This triggered a new wave of French speaking supporters, aka the Fran Babies, heading over to the Amber Lynn Reads channel, flooding her community tab with love. This was the most support Amber has ever had in a long time, which in my opinion is good for her because she really needs it. The only problem was the Fran Babies don't know what to expect as they know little to nothing about Amber's past behavior, so they're in for a little treat. Catching up to the most recent drama, Cake Gate. In April of this year, an anonymous subscriber sent Amber Lynn about $90 worth of gourmet baked goods from Strawberry Hill Baking Company. Amber Lynn voiced before that she doesn't want anyone to send her food related items and says the person was being malicious when she opened it. She wished the person would go to hell with President Donald Trump. People began to argue that the person probably sent it with the kindness of their heart. Also, who would be willing to spend that much if it was to troll Amber Lynn? Speculations circulated that the person could have been a French supporter, a new Amber supporter who was probably not aware of the no food policy. This led people to go ham on Amber and she later demanded the person who sent her the kick to message her in private. Hundreds of people began to come forward claiming that they were the cake sender and a person even caused more drama by bringing the controversy into Strawberry Hill's social media stirring the pot. Something that was unnecessary and honestly dumb just to make Amber look more worse than she is. Just recently in May, the month I'm recording this, someone came forward claiming they were the one who sent Amber the cake. The person came with receipts and proof that it was unfortunately them who sent the baked goods and to be honest, 
I believe them. The subscriber was part of the Fran babies during the French Revolution crossover. They didn't know what Amber's no food policy was and sent the cake as a sign of support. After being humiliated and cornered by Amber Lind and the internet, the anonymous sender expressed how they won't be interacting with Amber's content again because the whole situation has been traumatic. Amber's recent community post addressed her feelings about the situation. Again, I think people are missing the point. Sending someone who is 500 pounds trying to get weight loss surgery a large cake and a large bread is warranted for an opinion and my opinion still stands. I don't think it's okay. I have feelings. I was hurt by it. Especially after everything I've been going through with my food addiction, trying to heal from trauma, and undergo weight loss surgery. When you hurt someone's feelings, you apologize. You don't get angry because you hurt them. You correct your actions and apologize. So many of you are missing the key points to why this hurt me and why I reacted the way I did because I'm Amber Lynn and we need drama to keep a certain side of this community thriving but to those who understand me and made me realize I'm valid in how I feel. Thank you, forever and always. I will never speak on this matter again on any platform. I didn't see an issue with Amber Lynn getting upset and thought her reaction was valid but she executed it poorly. Also, it was just a miscommunication which was bound to happen because Amber never really put a disclaimer on her PO box information. As of now, no big scandal is going on, just behind the scenes stuff with Destiny and Amber Lynn. Destiny recently made a comeback video exposing her relationship with Amber. What do you guys think of this? Personally, Amberlynn is not the worst YouTuber ever and I actually find her to be decent and kind of funny. Honestly, I can't wait to see what comes next for Amber and the Amberverse. It's honestly so entertaining. Nonetheless, a fun time on this side of the internet. Reminder, please do not go out of your way and say anything malicious to anyone mentioned in this video. Until next time, peace. I told myself I'm never be with someone who's a